The 12-team college football playoff is going to be a complete and utter disaster. It is one of the most poorly planned, ill-conceived things I have ever seen or heard of. And I think it's ridiculous that there are so many flaws in a system that is going to just be blindly employed just by people that only care about money. So in this video, we're going to go over eight reasons why the 12-T playoff is completely the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. And before I go to record this video, something happened that I think even further drives home my point. The playoff committee has met, and they're discussing expanding to a 14-team playoff already before we've even seen what the effects of a 12-team playoff is. What that tells you, no matter if you're in favor of expansion or not, is that the committee doesn't care if it makes the games more competitive or what it does to the sport. No, they just care about more money in their pockets because of more games. So... Without further ado, let's get into reason number one. Reason number one why the 12-team playoff is stupid is something that I could easily point out, and I think anyone with a half of a brain could easily point out just looking at the way it's set up. The five seed has a virtual free ride to the final four. And you're probably thinking, what? How on earth could that be a thing? Well, I would like to explain it by showing you one simple graphic. This is the path as a five seed to make the final four versus the path as a two seed to make the final four. So let's say the Ducks, right? They get the five seed. They're hosting a playoff game in the first round against the group of five representative in all likelihood. And if it's not the group of five representative, it's a really low ranked Big 12 representative because it's the last ranked automatic qualifier that gets in there. So if Liberty were to match up against Oregon, it would be a 22 and a half spread in Oregon's favor, according to the odds makers right now. And even if it was Boise State, it would be like 19 and a half. Essentially, you're looking at a at least double digit, probably in the 20 spread. So a home blowout victory. And then the game after that, they advance. The four seed is going to be another automatic qualifier, which in many years, that's going to end up being like a three loss Utah team or a three loss Kansas State team or whoever the Big 12 or ACC likely spits out as a team that's kind of underwhelming as the four seed. And so Oregon in a hypothetical game against Kansas State would be favored by 15 and a half. So that's a home game where you would be favored to crush the other team, and then a neutral site game against a team you're also going to be hugely favored against. Versus if you're the two seed, and you've earned that buy by playing an extra game, by the way, and we'll get into that, get into that later, but your matchup is going to be, oh, against one of the best teams in the country, because as the two seed, you're playing against the seven and ten seeds, which according to the way the automatic qualifiers make... They could literally be like the fifth and eighth best teams in the country, better than this three or four seeds who automatically got in there. If you go back to my bracket real quickly, you see Florida State is in the three spot. Kansas State's in the four spot. I have Florida State at 10th in my rankings, and I have Kansas State at like 13th. And so this means that they're bumping down whoever the 7 and 10 and 8 and 9 and 6 and all those other teams are a couple spots. So their seeding is not reflecting how good they are. I think that the auto bids are so, so dumb, and I'll talk more about that. But just the fundamental fact that the 5 seed has an easier path than the 2 seed is something that I think is being gravely overlooked. The second reason the 12-team playoff is stupid is the group of five gets a pity spot rather than earning it. So whoever gets the automatic bid from the group of five, they might earn it. They might be really good. They might be an undefeated team that we think is deserving. But what happens if it's an 11-2 and Boise State? Or if it's like last year where Liberty, yes, they're undefeated, but they played literally the dead last ranked schedule in the entire country? It just feels like an absolute pity spot for the group of five and I ask you one question if you're right now up in arms thinking like oh what's this guy talking about the group of five needs to have representation I'll ask you one question do you ever think there has been a group of five team that was capable of winning the national title or at least at the very least a team that deserved a playoff spot that finished outside of the top 12 if you look at some recent examples either of the Cincinnati teams they both finished in the top 12 the UCF teams, they finished in the top 12. Any group of five team that has been at the center of an argument for group of five inclusion in the college football playoff was inside of the top 12. 
So I don't think there needs to be a special carve out to give them their own little spot so they can feel included. That's stupid. I think that they 100% should just have to earn it and finish in the top 12. Let's get to the third reason it's completely stupid. Rematches, rematches, rematches. There's going to be a lot of rematches in the 12-team playoff because conference championship games are a thing. And so we could be in a position where Michigan and Ohio State, which I think many can argue has been the best game in our sport every single year because they play at the end of the season. It's likely the only time they'll play all year, and it's awesome. But we could be in a situation where Michigan and Ohio State play. Michigan wins. It's crazy. It's a great game. Then seven days later, they play again in the Big Ten title game, and maybe Ohio State beats Michigan, and now everybody goes, oh, okay. Actually, I'll do you one better. Let's say Michigan beats Ohio State a second time in the Big Ten title game, but the Buckeyes, because it's a 12-team playoff, they still squeak in at the 10 spot because their only losses are to Michigan. And then Michigan sitting in the two seed, Ohio State wins their game, and they play for a third time. Do you really mean to tell me that third game is going to feel as meaningful the third time around? I could be completely wrong. What Maybe some of you will see that and think, oh, this is so awesome. We get this rivalry three different times. It's adding value. I think it takes away value. I don't want to see teams playing that many times. That's the NFL. That's where you play teams a billion times a year. And uh, what happens if Ohio State loses the first two to Michigan, but then wins the third? Something I look back to is the last season, not this last season, but the year prior, when Michigan beat Ohio State, and then the Buckeyes still squeaked into the playoff, and then the, it looked like the Buckeyes could beat Georgia. And this was after Michigan already lost. The feeling I had when I was thinking, wow, we're about to have Ohio State be at double-digit favorites against TCU in the national title. Like, this is a thing that's about to happen. It felt wrong. And it felt wrong, and that was in a four-team era that that happened. That's going to actually happen and happen a lot in the 12-team era where a team that doesn't deserve a second chance because they lost is going to get that. It's just going to happen. This next one, number four, first-round buys are just completely stupid and illogical. And this one is one I hold very near and dear to my heart because I think it's one of the most egregious examples. The first round buys are automatic bids, meaning I've already talked about how it's going to give to at least two teams that are very lowly ranked or not ranked high enough, going to give them top four spots, basically. A team like Notre Dame is never going to be able to get a top four spot because they're not in a conference, which is frankly un-American. But the most, I think, damning thing about the first round buys is... Let's walk through this. What do you have to do in order to earn a first round buy? Ah, you have to win your conference championship. Okay, so what you're telling these teams is in order to play one less game, you have to play one more game. Does that make any sense to anyone? You have to play an extra game to earn the right to play one less game. If I'm Penn State, I am rooting to finish third in the standings. So I can just get in the playoffs without having to play that game in the Big Ten title, and I can just get a nice spot. Rather than having to play the game in the Big Ten title, potentially lose that, and then you're having to play two extra games compared to everyone else. But if you win, oh, it's like, oh, great, you got to play an extra game to earn the right to play one last game. It makes absolutely zero sense. This next one uh, is... Another one that I have a big gripe with, I'm aware some people might not, but the games are hilariously spread apart. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to check what the schedule, what it's actually going to look like for these games for the 12-team playoff era, but basically they play the first round games and then there's a 10-day gap until we see any more college football games. They play those games, there's another 10-day gap, and then they play those games and there's another 10-day gap. We're not going to finish the college football season until January 20th. And I know that sounds awesome to some people, like, oh, more college football. It's just so spread out. You're going to be sitting there like, oh, they haven't played the college football national title yet? Like, what's happening? January 20th. It's ridiculous. Ten days between these games. And guess what? National title game, still on a Monday. Make it make sense. Reason number six is going to be one that I know some people are going to refute, and they're not going to be willing to accept, and they're going to say it's not true. I promise you it's true. There's going to be less parity with a 12-team playoff. There's one thing that is true. 
there will be more access. Yes, more teams are going to make the playoff. You're going to see a group of five team in it every year. You're going to see some teams that aren't familiar faces. You're going to see some weird teams to get in that wouldn't, wouldn't have had a chance otherwise to make the playoff. Is it going to increase parity in terms of who wins the national title? No, it's going to decrease it. By increasing access to the playoffs, you are guaranteeing the Ohio States and the Alabamas and the Georgias and the Clemsons and the Michigans and the Oklahomas of the world, they're going to get a spot every single year or most years, and at least three to four of those teams every season. And what's going to happen is as long as those teams end up on the right sides of the bracket, they're just going to be in the Final Four. And yeah, maybe there's an upset. Maybe Bama goes down one year and people are like, oh, that was so awesome. You're still going to end up with those guys at the end that are more talented. You just are. If you wanted parity in this sport, the four-team playoff was perfect for that. Georgia was the best team in the country this last season, and yet they stumbled against Bama in the SC title game. One loss. They're out. That's never going to happen again. Georgia will never miss the playoffs, or at least won't under Kirby Smart. In the next, what, five seasons? What's it going to take for Georgia to miss in the 12-team era? Three losses? How often do you think Georgia's losing three games? Ohio State, if there was a 12-team playoff in the last decade... They would have never missed. They would have never missed the playoff. Bama would have only missed it once. So it's not going to increase parity in terms of who wins the national title. I think we're going to start to see a restriction. Teams like Notre Dame and Penn State should be the most upset by going to 12 teams in the playoff because now they have to win four games in a row at the end of the season or three games in a row at the end of the season versus two before, which was so much more manageable for a program like that. Number seven is one that makes me really sad. Uh, The regular season will be devalued. One of the things that makes college football my favorite sport over the NFL, over the MLB, over the NBA, over every other sport, college basketball, over college baseball, is the regular season means so much. Every game you're on pins and needles. On any given Saturday, you can watch 70 plus games of every team and every college town that the teams are playing in. Everything is riding on that Saturday, and it means so much. In the 12-team playoff era, people are going to start to realize, oh, you can actually lose three games, but as long as you get in your conference title and win, you'll you'll get a spot. Or, oh, well, there's one loss isn't going to end our season. Uh, this loss might lo- end our season, but actually it might not. We we could still be fine uh, in this in this game. Like. The tension that you felt in some of those games and the stakes, like the tension you felt in the SEC title game last year between Bama and Georgia, where you know the loser is most likely out, it's just not going to be there anymore in the 12-team playoff era. Instead, it's going to be seeding. Yeah, good luck. We'll we'll find out how how much people care about seeding in this playoff, where I've already shown the seeding doesn't even matter that much. The seeding barely affects... In fact, it's an easier path as a lower seed sometimes, so... Uh, The regular season, which is the most precious part of our sport, it's going to be devalued by this, and that's one of the reasons I hate it the most. And alas, we've made it to number eight. Uh, This one I'm not too passionate about, but bowl games make even less sense now. And it's not that I'm a bowl game defender, or I think it's a big travesty that bowl games don't mean that much. They already don't mean a lot. But I I think it's evidence of how little thought has gone into the 12-team playoff. Has anyone talked about reducing bowl games or what this is going to do to bowl games or how to incentivize bowl games? Even if you wanted to revive them and and have them still have meaning, no one's talked about that. The bowl games are just still there and games that already had very little meaning to these players and these coaches and these programs are going to have even less meaning except for a few select programs that care which is really fun to watch when they care it's not fun when they don't care and these bowl games are going to mean even less now and no one has thought of any strategies to make them mean something still no people are just just riding the wave oh more money yeah let's do more games so that pretty much sums up my thoughts on why the 12 team playoff is just the stupidest thing ever i'm aware a lot of people don't agree and i see people all the time saying stuff like who wouldn't want more football and you just don't like fun and i can't believe you dislike the group of five i'm not saying any of those things i'm just saying what i think would be the most healthy for our sport and to preserve the sport that i love but i'm aware that it's changing and there's nothing i can really do to stop it i I think the way i would describe the last like year and a half of monitoring this situation it's kind of been like getting run over by a zamboni you can see it from a mile away it's coming there's nothing you can do to stop it it's just going to be a slow and painful death so i've pretty much accepted it and i've come to terms that there's nothing i can do to stop this and they're already talking about expanding it to 14 which means they're probably going to expand to 16 and they're probably going to try and expand to 24 and all that matters is money and 
if you look at what the 64 team bracket is to March Madness, yes, it's huge. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, it's one of the best sporting events of the year. And yes, all that's great about it. However, it makes the regular season not mean anything. And that's the thing that is so intoxicating to me about college football. I want to protect the regular season. And yet it does not seem like that's something that's being prioritized. And that's unfortunate. That sucks. I don't want college football to turn into a sport where people are circling only January and saying, oh, I can't wait till January, that 12-team playoff. Hey, is your team still in the hunt? You know, I want every single Saturday to matter. So there's my thoughts on the 12-team playoff. Uh, Sorry about my grumpy old man energy when it comes to this subject. I know this video was a little bit more down and less positive than my videos usually are, but I just wanted to give my thoughts on it, you know, and I I think if enough people were to voice their displeasures with this playoff, maybe something could happen, but I digress. Uh, Thanks for watching the video. As usual, if you enjoyed the content, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it and you're an expansionist, maybe still like, comment, subscribe, and then just comment down why you think it's awesome for the sport, and I'll probably engage in a little debate with you, and maybe some other people will. That'll be great. Uh, We're continuing to move in the right direction uh, with this channel and growing every day, so I appreciate you guys for that, and I will see you guys later.